Well, I think we have uh, all the members we're expecting tonight, so we may as well get started. Uh, so we'll call the meeting to order and uh, I have to read the speech, so bear with me. Uh, as a preliminary matter, this is Larry Murphy, Chair of the Newbury Planning Board. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So planning board members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Peter Pecos. Yes. Morris. Yes. Leslie Matthews. Yes. Hey. Yes. And Mary Stoner, associate member, will not be with us tonight. Town staff, when I call your name, please respond uh, in the affirmative. Martha Taylor. Yes. And anticipated speakers presented on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Charlie uh, Palmasano, Liberty Law and Title, LLC. Yes, present. Thank you. Steve Sawyer, DCI. Yes, present. Uh, Mark DePiro, 105 Seagate, LLC. Is Mark coming tonight, Steve? Uh, uh, he may, or may, I think he, he had a commitment. He may not make it. All right, that's fine. Tom Zarico. Zinco? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Robert Griffin, Griffin Engineering. Uh, loud and clear. Okay. And Michael McNiff, Caldwell Banker. Michael's so actually with me in the Hello. same room. So he's, he's, uh, okay. he's here. Hello. Very Thank good. You. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so good evening. This is the July 13th, 2022 <laughs> open meeting of the Newbury Planning Board and is being conducted remotely consistent with Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022 which extends the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general laws, chapter 30A, section 20, until July 15, 2022. This order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location and allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. This meeting, the Newbury Planning Board is convened uh, by video conference via Zoom as posted on the Planning Board's agenda, which can be found on the town's website and which identifies how the public may join. You may join us by going to http colon backslash backslash zoom.us and entering meeting ID number 832-7141-3056 or by calling one 929 2056099 US New York in entering the meeting ID when prompted. Uh, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that attendees are participating by video and or telephone conference. The meeting is also being broadcast live through local access cable uh, channel nine on Zoom and at www.tnctv.org and the recording will be available on the Newbury Access YouTube channel. Uh, for meeting materials, meeting materials were provided to the board members prior to the meeting for review. Uh, applicants or their representatives may be called upon to speak and if needed, share information on the screen. Uh, please state your intention after you have been called. Uh, meeting business ground rules. Before we turn to the first item on the agenda, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our meeting, of our business, excuse me, and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. Uh, as chair, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After speakers conclude their remarks, I will go down the list of board members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, for all attendees except board members and staff, please remember to mute your computer with the mute button or your phone uh, star six to toggle mute unmute when you are not speaking. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please use earbuds uh, slash earphones with tablets or cell phones. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Please be aware that video participants can see you and that you should take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If board members wish to engage uh, in discussions with other members, please do so through me, taking care to identify yourself when you wish to speak. For public comments, there will be an opportunity for public comment and questions during public hearings. 
After board members have spoken, I will afford the public an opportunity to comment and or ask questions as follows. I will see questions and comments through the Zoom raised hand function. For video conference participants to raise your hand, hover over the bottom of the uh, Zoom window below the photo gallery and click on the gray hand that appears. Please ensure your name is fully and correctly displayed on the participant list. You may rename yourself by using the more function next to your name. For telephone participants, to raise your hand in a Zoom meeting, hit uh, star nine on your phone keypad. I will then allow questions and comments from members of the public who have raised their hands in the order in which they are listed, which is determined by the order in which people click on the raised hand function. Each participant will be called on to provide his or her name and address, and then ask a question or make a comment. I will afford the applicant participant or his or her representative the opportunity to reply. Your hand will be lowered when you have been given the floor for your questions. I will then continue down the list of those in the raised hand column and again afford the participant applicant a representative an opportunity to speak. Should uh, there be a physical or electronic submittal of, of questions or concerns, they will be noted for the record. And again, the participant applicant representative shall be afforded the opportunity to speak if the issues uh, raised have not yet been addressed. Finally, each uh, vote taken at this meeting will be conducted by a roll call. So that concludes the introduction, which I'm sure Pete Pecos knows by heart by now, right, Pete? Well done, Larry. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I guess that we'll turn to the agenda. The first item is the submission of an ANR plan for the uh, line lot adjustment uh, between 114 and 116 Orchard Street. And I believe attorney uh, Palmasano will be speaking to that. So. Yes, thank you. Have the floor, sir. Thank you. Charlie Palmasano from Liberty Law and Title uh, submitting plan and our plan for a lot line change between 114 Orchard Street, map R21, lot 11, uh, owner David Sanderson, and 116 Orchard Street, map R21, lot 10, owner Peter Tardy. And would you like me to put that up on the screen? Oh, yes, Martha. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And thanks I... for your help with this. You're welcome. So is everybody able to see that? Yes. yes. I can see it. Excellent. All right. So. Uh, before the board tonight to seek approval of the aforementioned lot line change, as indicated on a plan before you, the plan <laughs> titled Lot Line Adjustment Plan of Land by ARC Surveying and Engineering Associates dated June 3rd, 2022. As you'll note, we're abandoning a portion of the current lot line bordering the property currently owned by Peter and Musita Tardy and David Sanderson. The new lot line allows for Mr. and Ms. Tardy's property to incorporate a stone wall indicated on said plan. I, I'm not sure if you guys can see that with right. the uh, plan before you. It's down along Orchard. Right, yeah. right down here. You see my hand? Yes. Yes. Thank you. So the, the adjustment provides for 38,860 square feet contiguous upland outside the ACEC and wetlands for lot two. With respect to lot one, the adjustment provides for 32,004 square contiguous upland outside of the ACEC and the wetlands, both of which exceed the minimum contiguous upland and area outside the ACEC of 32,000 square feet. Also, both lots remain conforming as to lot area and frontage. So for all of the above reasons, uh, we believe that the plan meets the requirements such that the board may endorse the plan as not requiring approval under the sub subdivision control law. And that is my presentation. Okay. And uh, Martha, you've, you've reviewed this. I have reviewed this. Um, Attorney Promisano, I just have one question. You, I think, gave a date of June 3rd, 2022. Um, and the plan that I was sent by Tim Meehan is May 10th, 2022. Oh, okay. So yeah, so as I look at this big plan I have here, it does say May 10th, 2022, the signature up below the stamp 
it says 6-3-2022. All right, okay. All right, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Yes, thank you. And I will bring the other two copies tomorrow. Of the, of the four May, okay. Thank you. So okay. yes, yes, I've, um, uh, this went through a couple of rounds of review with the, the engineer, Tim Meehan. Um, the one thing I had been concerned about because this actually, um, 114 is a lot that we had dealt with before. There is a fairly extensive amount of, of ACEC uh, as well as wetlands on, on those parcels. And so, um, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure that um, as attorney Palmasano noted that we had enough area outside the wetlands and ACEC to um, meet our zoning requirement of 32,000 square feet minimum. Um, both lots do retain the required amount of total area as well as uh, more than the required amount of frontage. Okay, um, turn to the board members. Pete, do you have any questions or concerns? No questions, thank you. Uh, George, same question for you. Any questions or concerns? No, no questions. Uh, Leslie, any questions or concerns? <clears throat> Just for clarification, um, neither one of these lots has been uh, developed in any way. Are you asking me? No, not that I'm aware of. Okay. In fact, there's a notation on the plan that indicates uh, creating this building. We are not, there's no intention of this plan to create a new building lot. And so that it's just to create more space on one lot and reduce the space on the other lot? Specifically, it's to incorporate the stone wall uh, that uh, sneaks over to the Sanderson's lot. If you can see yeah. that down below there, I don't know if Martha can point that out. I've got my, my hand is going yeah. around it right now. Do you yeah. see that? It cleans yeah. up the lot for that reason alone. So it just kind of pushes that little uh, triangle together. Yes. Okay. Right. Was that over? I mean, both, both lots are already developed their existing structures, their single family homes, but there's no intention for further development of either of these. So this was just like uh, kind of a, a flop in the lot type of thing, you know, just, we're just cleaning it. Right, so the, the lot line is going from this dashed line here, if you can see my hand, mm -hmm. over to the solid line here, specifically to have all of this piece of stone wall on, on this property on lot two. So that, that clarifies issues of maintenance and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah, and if I'm reading this correctly, you're just moving the line, it looks like about 17 and a half feet. Is that, right. is that correct? Yep. Yeah, 17.5, correct. Okay. Uh, does that answer your questions, Leslie? It does, thank you. Okay. And Woody, any questions or comments? <clears throat> no, no, no questions or comments, thank you, sorry. Well, and, uh, and I have none, it seems pretty straightforward. Um, so if uh, at this point I'd entertain um, a motion to endorse the A&R plan uh, showing the lot line adjustment between 114 and 116 Orchard Street. So moved. Oh, and uh, do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay. And uh, any discussion, Pete? No, thank you. Uh, George, any discussion on the motion? Did we lose George? Looks like we may have. All right. Um, all right. Unmuted. Uh, oh, okay. A question. Uh, and any discussion on the motion, Leslie? None. And Woody, any discussion on the motion? No discussion. Thank you. All right. And then uh, on the motion, Pete, how do you vote? Yes. And George, how do you vote? Yes. Leslie, how do you vote? Yes. And Woody, how do you vote? Yes. And I vote yes as well, so it passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. So now um, the chair will sign uh, sign the mylar and uh, the prints and, and the other the four A's. And as soon as that's uh, all done, I will let you know, and the mylar can it'll be ready to be recorded. Thank you, Martha. You, you've been you've been great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay.
Um, the next two items on the agenda are um, the financial report uh, and um, uh, the liaison reports. But uh, Steve Sawyer, are you ready to go forward at this point? Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, I'm fine, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, really uh, the only reason we're in is just for a release of the bond amount. I think it was submitted. Um, it was submitted to Martha and Joe. Um, and I think Joe agreed. I, I didn't hear anything um, in response from Joe regarding um, any questions regarding the amount requested. And um and that's uh, that. You know, that's just a sort of an administration administrative item. So, just looking to to get a release there. Right, and just to, to confirm, Joe did did review the the bond amount uh, against the the work that's been done, and he felt that it was uh, reasonable. So, Steve, just to clarify, you're requesting release on behalf of uh, 105 Seagate LLC of four hundred and four thousand four hundred. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay, so the initial bond amount was 693960 You're requesting the release of the 404400 which would leave a reduced amount of 289560 Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, and again, as Martha said, we do have uh, correspondence from uh, Joe Suetka, our consulting engineer, uh, who does um, uh, say that he feels the... Uh, um, that amount is uh, satisfactory to complete the work. Um, uh, any questions or comments, Pete? I know. I'm all set. Thanks very much. George, questions or comments? No, I don't. Uh, Leslie, questions or comments? No, thank you. And Woody, uh, any, any questions or comments? No, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone from the public, Martha, who's uh, indicated a desire to speak? Um, I do not see anyone here. Okay. In that case, um, I would entertain a motion to reduce the bond amount as, as requested. So moved. George, thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Woody. Uh, any discussion uh, on the motion, Pete? No discussion, thank you. Uh, George, any discussion? No discussion. Uh, Leslie, any discussion? No. Uh, and Woody, any discussion? None. All right. Uh, then, uh, Pete, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. Uh, George, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. Uh, Leslie, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. Uh, Woody, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So the motion passes unanimously. Um, Thank you. And then, you and there was a, Steve, I'm yeah, sorry. So ahead, then the, and then the other item I think Martha had in the agenda. So when there was a slight change, so in the interest of, um, you know, in, in the interest of ecological and in the right thing to do is we're installing a irrigation well on the property. Um, uh, that's going to be totally segregated from any of the buildings. And we've, the Newburyport DPS has, well, basically what they need to confirm is there's no cross connections into any buildings, which once constructed in the piping and pumps will be all exterior. Um, and so there's a deep, there's a, well, moderate, uh, it's probably, it's like an 18 foot deep gravel pack well that'll be used for irrigation of the property. We did re receive approval uh, from the health department for this. Um, so that's, and I think we just wanted to keep the board appraised of the situation. I think Martha wanted me to let you know and, and to keep your appraised, that's um, a change from, it was never shown in the original plan. Um, but in the interest of saving potable water uh, for irrigation, uh, we, we propose this. Okay. Um Oh, I'm sorry. Were you? I, I, I think that's so it. I'm sorry. That's it. Yeah. Does Does anybody, Steve? Do you have the plan to share? Does anybody? Yeah, I could share it? where where it ended up. Yeah. And the other thing I had noted to Mark because this is in the designated open space, it should be mentioned in the conservation restriction as it's. Oh, yeah. okay. So he said he would pass that on to Matt Gaines. Um. Everyone, see this. Yes. Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. So, 
This, um, this plant is the as built of the community septic system. Um, so there's uh, the two, two septic tanks, pump chamber, the field has been installed. So 11 feet off the pump chamber is where we're putting the irrigation well. The minimum offset there is 10. Uh, so we meet that requirement. Uh, I believe it's only, it's either 50 or 25 to the uh, field, but we're over 100 feet, which is what's acceptable for uh, potable water. So a well within that. It's off of the properties. It's basically within the area that we're using for the septic, the parking. So it's not like we're, we, you know, it's in a in an area that we're already uh, providing um, infrastructure and, and features in the open space. So we'll add that to the plan, uh, the location of that um, that well. Right. So that'll show up on the as built. Yes, the final. Yeah, the final um, planning board as built. And I, I probably uh, we had submitted and completed the as built for the septic uh, prior to this being considered and installed. But um, once we update the planning board, we'll add that to the septic as built as well. Um, so uh, Martha, um, I understand, uh, and Steve, I understand that this is really just on here for informational purposes. There's no, uh, uh, no need for any action on the part of the board, is that correct? I would think so, yes. Uh, and I, I do note that Joe Sowetka in his July 6th um, letter also gave his blessing to the installation uh, that it made sense. Um, so uh, I, won't be, I won't be calling for motion, but if, uh, if there are any questions, uh, comments, Pete? Uh, no questions or comments, thanks. All right, George, questions or comments? No questions or comments. Uh, Leslie, how about you, questions or comments? None. And Woody? I have a just a quick curiosity question. Is it installed or it's going to be installed? Uh, I may actually already be in. I'm not sure. I, I, to be honest, uh, okay. I, it may I, they may have actually dropped it in. It, it, well, uh, at least the manhole portion of it. I asked because you said something about 18 feet. You said it's 18 feet deep? Yes. Okay, so that's why I was wondering if it yeah. had been installed or not. Yeah, it, it, it was a good excavation. You had to be careful of the surrounding, uh, particularly the pump chamber. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, I don't have anything. So unless uh, Martha or any one of the other board members um, have any further questions, I think we can let you go, Steve. And you're certainly welcome to hang around and listen to the rest of the meeting. I know how much been, you enjoy it. But. Yeah. It's been so long, you never know. I might hang I out. I'm, up, I'm, up, I'm out hanging up in my, hanging out in my attic. It's, I haven't been up here in a while. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Thank unless you, you have anything to add, I guess we'll move on to the next agenda. Thank item. you so much. Just, just, Thank you. Just for okay. Steve's information, if I may, um, according to the tripartite uh, agreement, the board needs to sign a certificate of compliance regarding the release so that the funds can be um, actually dispersed by the bank. So that that's the one other step that needs to be done. Okay, so what is there uh, a standard form that we need to send in? Um, you know, I don't know if the bank has a form that they would like right. us to use. Um, that would be fine. Otherwise, um, it, you know, if the board is in agreement, I could I could draft one. But if the bank has okay. a standard one that they like to see, that would okay. be great. Do you want to okay. check out? I'll check. Well, uh, tomorrow morning, I'll check with Matt Gaines, Mark, and, and we'll get back to you. Okay, that would be great. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Arthur, is that something I can sign on behalf of the board or do you need uh, everyone's signature? The tripartite agreement says that it needs to be signed by a majority of the members. So I don't know whether, you know, that would allow them to vote to authorize you. We could include a certificate of vote with it, perhaps, but the tripartite does say majority of members. Okay, we probably should stick with that then. Yeah. Is that something we just PDF PDF around and handle it that way? No, we get wet signatures. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, that might be, um, you know, I think for for this one we probably should do it as stated in the tripartite. If you want to check with Matt to see whether the yep. board could authorize the chair going forward, and then we could have a certificate of vote yeah. to go along with it. Yeah, if need be, I think it, you know we, we I could have we'll get it together and. Um, you know, we'll, we'll coordinate through you, Martha, but I'm sure Gail at, at Mark's office can run it around and get the signatures and just coordinate without it, not impeding on anyone's private time, but when they're available to 
to help us out and sign. All right, we'll get that done, but. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next we have 15 Coleman Road, Fieldstone Lane, Fieldstone Lane uh, Tom Zarico. Tom, we'll give you the floor. Okay, Larry, thank you very much. Hello again, everybody. Nice to see you all again. Uh, Tom Zarico, 21 High Street, North Andover. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, this is a request to release three of the actively um, under construction uh, lots from the performance covenant. Um, we uh, don't want to get ourselves into a, an emergency request as we move closer to, to completion of those homes and closings and occupancy permits, which we're expecting uh, to start uh, probably the first week or two of September. Uh, and these three homes we expect to be occupied uh, at least by uh, at least by no later than October. And uh, that's why we're here asking for the release of these units. Just in the way of updates on the subdivision, um, any of you who've been by see that it's been relatively active. We have uh, four homes actively under construction, the three requested here plus lot number three, uh, which foundation is, is actively being constructed right now. Uh, so we have two more homes, uh, lots number four and six uh, to be uh, to complete home designs on and, and com complete or get started on construction sometime later this year. We expect, um, I expect at least four, if not five of these homes to be occupied by the end of the year. That's relatively consistent with what I was expecting when we started. We got a little bit of a late start. As you know, it was a tough winter getting our septic system in. And, um, uh, and with the uh, ground conditions that we had to work on, but everything is looking good out there now. And um, I think from an administrative standpoint, we've, we've done most of what, uh, what was expected of us out there unless, some, unless someone brings my attention to something else. <laughs> so uh, that's the quick update. And I'm uh, obviously happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Tom. Martha, can you... Uh... Bring us up to speed on this from your end. Um, well, I don't really have have much much more to add. We have received the uh, the the form E, uh, which was drafted by Tom's attorney. So the board would need to uh, vote to release the lots and authorize you as chair to sign it. Um, we did get the uh, a, a revised a &R for the Witchstone Fatherstone lot this afternoon. So I will review that and um, uh, with the goal of, of hopefully getting that submitted and a uh, vote to endorse at the next meeting um, in the beginning of August. Um, um, has Joe Sawetka looked at this or? Uh... The, the release request? Yeah. Um, he actually has not. Um, I think because the board had felt that, um, you know, previously re released lots one and eight, we felt that the municipal, the roadway and the municipal utility and st installation was sufficient for that. I actually okay. did not run this by Joe. All right, but you're, you're comfortable. Yes. Yeah, okay. And as Tom mentioned, we, we are still retaining three lots. Sure, okay. Um, I'll turn to the board members. Pete, any questions, comments? Uh, not on this. Not on this piece. Thanks. Okay, George. How about you? Any oh, questions? Comments? I'm all set. No questions or comments. Uh, Leslie. Nothing. Uh, and Woody. No. Sounds good. Okay. And I I have none either. Uh, so we're ready um, to entertain a motion, Martha. I believe so. Okay. And I'm just trying to think um, formulate it in my mind here. If you bear with me. Um, so I would accept a motion to release uh, lots two, five, and seven from the performance covenant and to authorize the chair to sign the form E certificate of performance on behalf of the board. So moved. Uh, thank you, Leslie. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Woody. Um, any discussion on the motion, Pete? No discussion. Any discussion on the motion, George? No. Uh, Leslie, any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> no. And Woody, any discussion on the motion? No. Nope. So Pete, how do you um, vote on the motion? Yes. George, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. 
Uh, Leslie, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. And Woody, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. Uh, I vote yes as well, so it's unanimous. Um, Pete, uh, was, was there something else you wanted to talk about? Hey, Martha, could you pop up the images of the Father Stone? Uh, uh, Tom, I took some images uh, the other day, and I love the stone wall. Uh, it looks great. It looks like a nice protective barrier. Um, just so okay. folks can see what it looks like. <clears throat> Say, bear with me for a second. Um, oops, <laughs> I think you're seeing the whole. Um, they're unfortunately quite small. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I try. If I blow them up, they get a little a little fuzzy. Oh, um, can we? We can increase your your screen size, can we? I don't, I played around with them before. It didn't really seem to make any okay. difference. All right, well, good attempt. Um, so uh, I, folks, I don't, I don't think you can see this, but there's a beautiful stone wall that uh, Tom has constructed that goes uh, around the stone, around the father stone uh, and protects it probably about a 10, is it about 10 or 12 foot uh, buffer, uh, Tom? It's a little, uh, actually, it's a little bit more than that, uh, generally, Peter. We, we wanted to to give uh, plenty of room for um, for any any piece of equipment that might ever need to be in there. So, yeah, it it, it looks great, and, and and I know that we, we talked about uh, uh, enhancing the uh, uh, grass in there. But hey, are you going to be able to create any sort of buff, uh, uh, visual uh, visual or uh, pre buffers between the stone wall and the homes that are going in there? Um, it was my intent to do that. We yeah. were also planning on um, uh, planting a substantial buffer between. Uh, the Woodbury's uh, driveway behind uh, or to the to the right or east of, of, of that that lot as well, um, but that is part of the plan. Obviously, we we're waiting for the right time of year, and honestly, we've been uh, we've been searching for large, healthy evergreens, eight to ten foot in you know, Norway spruce or others. Very very difficult to find large, healthy evergreens this year. Uh, we're hoping that somebody will uh, will accumulate an inventory this fall that we can create a nice nice privacy screens, not only at the area of the Witchstone, but also uh, along some of the neighbor buffer zones that uh, uh, that actually, uh, there really was never any visual barrier there. We're just intending to create them. I, I think that's great. Thank you, uh, Martha, so much for trying to uh, screen share. I'm sorry that we couldn't see those images, cause, but uh, it is an impressive wall. And Tom, thank you very much for doing that. Well, Peter, thank you very much. That wall, I have to tell you, Ray, Ray has been uh, working for me for many, many, many years. And uh, I don't consider him a stonemason. He's really an artist. That's essentially a dry set wall, uh, which, which uh, I mean, he, he, uh, he carefully considers and places every stone as if it was uh, on his own front steps. It's, re it's really pretty special. So thanks for noticing. Yeah, yeah that and, great. I, and I'm sure Channing has, has an appreciation of it as well. Yep, <laughs> very nice. Very good. Um, before we let you go, Tom, Martha, I, I should have asked earlier, is there any member of the public here who wanted to uh, address this project at all? Uh, no members of the public. Uh, Channing Howard, the chair of the Historical Commission, has joined us. I'm not sure whether whether he wanted to say anything on this or another project. No, no. Uh, stone looks great. I'll have to go down there and check it out myself in person. Uh, doing a good job. Uh, Historical Commission is very happy. Good, wonderful. Well, well, thank you all very much. And uh, before we're done, that the uh, the the, uh, the area inside that that parcel will be uh, will be very healthy and very very lush grass there. Believe me, we'll uh, uh, we'll we'll take care of it as if it was our own, even though it's not. So, um, and it's very nice to see you all again. All right, thank you. All right, um, I think we can. Let you go and uh, turn to the next item on the agenda, 170 Orchard Street, for an informal discussion on the two subdivision com, uh, concept plans. Uh, and Mr. Griffin, we'll turn it over to you. Uh, good evening, and this is Mr. McNiff. Um, uh, Mr. McNiff has um, been involved in marketing this project. I think 
just wanted to, um, by way of introduction, tell you a little bit about his company. So, so Mike, if you could just uh, do that, then maybe I'll share my screen. We'll show you some graphics and we can talk about the, the project a little bit. Hi, everybody. My name is Michael McNiff. I reside at 37 Woodbury Street in Beverly, Mass. And I want to thank uh, Martha for getting us on the meeting and you guys for the time. Can you hear me? Take, okay, good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, uh, I appreciate that. As, as you all know, I know you're all acquainted with the property. It's a 21 acre property. It's owned by the estate of Luz Balgaris, which has been in the family for decades, as you know. And we were charged to go out and see what we could do with the property. I was well acquainted with the Charing Cross Corporation when they tried to do the forge project uh, four or five, six years ago. And um, I know the Charing Cross company, they were pretty uh, a pretty reputable company. I, I, I can't defend them. Unfortunately, I know that one of the principals got sick and, and eventually he passed away. So again, I don't want to defend what they did, but they were the ones who had proposed the 15 unit uh, the OSRD plan. And I know that they had requested a number of studies, both on the wetland annihilation, as well as some soil testing, which we have now done. Uh, that was never provided before. Uh, uh, Mrs. Jerkovich and the Balgaris has asked me to go out and put it on the market to see what kind of uh, feel is they it could get for the sale of the property. It actually did go on sale. They received a number of furious offers for the property. Uh, many of the local developers wanted to try to pursue uh, a similar dense project. I know that one of the property owners in back, Mr. Pearson would have liked to merge that upland with some of his property that was on the back of uh, uh, Pearson Drive. Uh, there were some other, a lot of nonprofits actually came through. There were some, uh, uh, one of the local dog rescue leagues, there was actually MIT had a, a horse rescue and mule rescue farm that they wanted to put up there. Um, there were some other people, there was one guy wanted to, uh, go forth with a Dover Amendment, which allows him to provide development for nonprofit educations uh, for, for disabilities. We had a solar panel company come through. They felt that they could use the credits by putting panelings up there, but they wanted to wait for the green energy, energy funding. Uh, we had a recovery center come through to take a look if they could uh, put in something. We had a, um, a marijuana farm. Uh, to see if they could do something out there as you know it's going. But I think at the end of the day, the Bulgaris didn't want to go through another long process. They wanted to do something that was a little more amenable to the neighborhood. We have talked to a number of neighbors out there. Uh, they certainly, nobody was in favor of the 15 unit project, even if it was approvable. So I think what we tried to do today, and I'll let Bob take over from here, is to present a four lot subdivision that had a lot of simplicity to it. And there's also a five lot proposal, but that turned it, that um, opened up the door for the OSRD. So I'll let Bob explain where we are today. And, and, and thanks again, Martha, for your help. Can you see the big blue box on the screen? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. So um, here's our, our 21 acre parcel with, uh, well, there's an arrow. Here's Orchard Street. And we have a, it's about 2,300 feet long from Orchard Street, you know, north all the way to the very end of our parcel here. Um, the, the site has got about three or four acres of wetlands in it. Uh, again, 20.6 20 acres total uh, at its widest point. I think it's around uh, 600 feet wide here. Um, and then it gets relatively, relatively narrow. It's 50 feet wide in this strip that connects the uh, agricultural fields with Orchard Street here. Um, we're in... Uh, you know, 40,000 acre zoning, uh, Pearson Drive here. These are all 20,000 acre lots, 20,000 square foot of lots um, up in this area here. We've got, I think, 18 abutters or 19 abutters on this, what we'll call the north side. And I think there's six or seven uh, parcels on the south side here. Um, one of the things that we did this past winter was we got the wetland delineation um, that had been approved by the uh, Conservation Commission previously. We got it extended 
for another three years because it was getting to the point of, of expiring. The wetland delineation, um, it was uh, prepared by Bill Manuel of Wetlands and Land Management, Inc. Um, and uh, so you can see on our plan, we've got a little blob of wetlands here as, as we come in from Orchard Street. There's an old foundation uh, at this portion of the site here. And this curly line is the tree line. So this is all sort of the agricultural area up here. And we've got a sort of a narrow strip of agricultural area. And then we get into this um, BVW. Now, the, the wetland delineation is based on plants, but it's also based on soil conditions. And so Mr. Manuel, when he was delineating the line, would actually have gone through the agricultural fields to find out where the soil conditions change from wetland soils or hydric soils to non-wetland soils or upland soils. And that's how this line was developed. When the Conservation Commission reconsidered the delineation this winter, there was uh, another round of you know, test pits and delineations by Mr. Manuel to show the Conservation Commission that the line was in fact accurate. And I think we changed one or two flags over the entire parcel. Uh, so I, I feel very confident that we have a good understanding of the wetland limits on the property. Uh, and uh, again, an, uh, an approved and extended ORAD at this point. The 100 foot buffer zone line is shown on the plan. That's this line through here. So, uh, you know, the, the Western portion of the property, the lower portion of the property as shown on the plan is where we have some wetlands, uh, no wetlands on the upper area. And it's topographically higher. I think the elevations on the, on the uh, Pearson Road or Pearson Drive side are about you know 56, 58, 60, and down here they get uh, you know as much as 20 feet lower than that. For the for the most part, the the slope is fairly gradual, uh, less than five percent sloping from the top of the page down towards the bottom of the page. This is um, just an extension of the previous plan. So here's our you know here, here's Orchard Street, and we go I don't know seven eight hundred feet. We hit a match line. We go to our next sheet. Oops, here we go. We go all the way out, we're, we're extending north you know, to the end of the property. Here's another match line, it has this little area here. The agricultural land, as you might remember from the aerial photograph, doesn't go all the way to the end. So this area, uh, it's on the left of this plan and the end of this match line area here has not been used for agricultural purposes, at least not recently. We also have a little bit of BVW in the middle of this uh, non-agricultural area back here as well. Uh, Mike is correct that we did a, a, a lot of soil testing. Um, you know, we um, we did take a look at the soil test information that Charing Cross had provided, but we went out in the fall and those are, these are the black test bits. Uh, we did a number of test bits in the fall and then we, uh, as we started laying things out in a little bit more detail and we had our wetland delineation completed, we went back out in the spring and we filled in some spots. Uh, the general story on the soils here is that uh, on the upper portion of the page, the eastern portion of the property or the Pearson Drive portion of the property, we've got pretty good soils for septic systems. And certainly all of these you know, residences on Pearson Drive all have septic systems. A uh, little bit uh, better uh, towards Orchard Street as, compo as compared to going out to the north away from Orchard Street. But this, you know, the top half of this plan is all very easy septic systems to design. We also looked at some soil conditions along the entrance roadway and in the area of the foundation area uh, for the, uh, the abandoned foundation because we needed some place to get rid of uh, water from the road and, you know, stormwater runoff considerations. Um, as we get over into the wetland areas over here, naturally, we don't have very good soils uh, for septic systems at all or for infiltrating you know, water as part of a drainage system either for that matter. That, that's sort of the short story on the soil conditions. Um, so here, here's a, a four lot development scheme that we uh, laid out. And so this is 500 feet from the edge of orchard, well, from, from the property line here to the back end of the cul-de-sac. And this is a conforming um, you know, cul-de-sac. It's got a, I think 160 foot radius on the outside of the property line. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, this is a 140 di foot diameter circle on the pavement on the outside and a 25 foot wide pavement. So it, it all sort of conforms to the, uh, I think the, the local rules and regulations. Um, we've got a sidewalk shown on one side coming out here at Orchard Street. I don't think there's, a, there's no sidewalk on Orchard Street, but we've got room for that here. Uh, we're showing a stormwater 
management device here. So it's in the upland area, it's above the BVW, but this would be, would be what we call a constructed stormwater wetland. And we've chosen that uh, type of stormwater treatment device because of the relatively shallow groundwater table in this area. So this will um, be excavated out and have some wetland plants in it. The wetland plants will do some polishing of any runoff that enters this area. And then after it's been polished, the water will flow uh, westerly down into the BVW. Um, we have uh, essentially a 40,000 square foot lot here, uh, lot number one. So the second lot is about 50,000 square feet. Third one's about 60,000 square feet. And I think the last one basically has all of the land or all of the remaining land in there. And that turns out to be around 700,000 square feet or around 16 acres associated with the last lot. The two, the two last lots, lots three and four in this plan would be served by a common driveway. You can also see that they, you know, both lots have frontage on the new subdivision roadway. Um, there's a couple of waivers associated with this plan. And, and these you, uh, I think we're told about with the Charing Cross application, but this narrow uh, extension or this narrow strip that goes out to the Orchard Street is 50 feet wide, where the town requires 53 feet. And uh, that's about a 200 foot length of uh, land that we have that's 50 feet wide. And then we have a, um, we don't have a, a rounded property line at the street intersection, which I think the subdivision rules and regulations require. So those are two dimensional uh, requirements that, uh, that we don't meet. Um, otherwise, again, pretty conventional, no uh, particularly challenging slopes or uh, drainage conditions or layouts of the lots. These little hatch squares that you see in each lot are areas that we would uh, designate for septic systems. Um, so again, I, I think the, the soils in the upper portion of the plan are all pretty, uh, pretty good. We shouldn't have any trouble getting septic systems in those locations uh, based on the test pits that we've done so far. We haven't done formal test pits with the Board of Health, uh, and we would like to do those in the near future, uh, probably you know, after we make some decisions <clears throat> after this meeting. Um, and then I also want to know, here's, the, here's an aerial photograph of the same plan. But you can see our last house here lines up with about 19 um, Pearson Drive, which is about 30 to 40 percent of the way down the extension of uh, uh, the extension of that road. So you would at the end of our work essentially would be, you know, 30 to 40 percent of the way down just to sort of um, get a feel for how far back on the lot we go. You might also remember from the previous application that there was a couple of, uh, I think, chestnut trees that had been identified by the landscape architect. One of those trees is located here, and there's another one further back on the lot here. So uh, we're, we're obviously able to not affect the, the nice chestnut tree at that location. And you can also see the, uh, you know, the agricultural layout here. Again, the, the wetlands, the, the delineated wetlands run out through the agricultural area in some portions of this uh, land, particularly on the, the western side of the uh, parcel. Um, when we presented this to the um, Bulgaris state representatives, um, there was some concern expressed about, geez, you know, it's, it's a lot of land, uh, only four lots. So they asked us to consider a, a, a fifth lot. And so we, we went back into that same uh, cul-de-sac. So this, this cul-de-sac is the same layout, same dimensions, same length. We were able to jerry, or, uh, well, gerrymander a little bit the lot, the lot frontage, and so we're, we've got frontage for everyone's got conforming frontage, the 125 feet that are required. All these lots are 40,000 square feet or more. Uh, we all have septic system locations in areas that are going to have good soils. Um, so I think it's a it's, it's a very workable plan. Um, it, it's again the same road construction. Uh, it's just that we would have three houses served by a common driveway instead of two houses served by a common driveway and slightly different lot lines. Um, the common driveway requires a, a planning board special permit. And I think as I read the regulations, uh, you're allowed to have up to three houses on a common driveway. Um, so this is, this is uh, you know, what we'd like to talk about tonight is do you think this is a reasonable plan? Uh, I would also point out that most of our work is you know, outside the Conservation Commission jurisdiction, here's that 100 foot buffer zone line. We will have to get the permission to build the stormwater basin and portions of the common driveway here. Oh, but sorry, but um, 
but all of this, you know, all the house construction work is outside the Conservation Commission jurisdiction. So it should be a reasonably straightforward application with them. Um, I, I do know that with the five lot plan, the subdivision regulation, or excuse me, the OSRD regulations require that uh, five lots um, at, at least uh, start the OSRD process. I'm not sure if you have to go through the OSRD process completely. And that's something we wanted to find out a little bit from you on. And I think there was also a uh, requirement in the subdivision regulations that for five or fewer lots, the environmental impact study was optional. So we're uh, thinking that by having a relatively low density application uh, in an area that's you know primarily an agricultural field, uh, you know four or five lots on 21 acres, uh, you know does this project really demand the environmental impact statement in addition? Um, so I, I, that sort of summarizes uh, our, our plans here and our options. And I'd at this point be very uh, pleased to hear from you guys and uh, try to address your questions. Um, what, uh, focusing on the four lot subdivision, what's the maximum length of the common driveway? So um, I think, this is probably 500 feet from the uh, from the turnaround to the last house here. I think on the I didn't measure this one, but I measured the the five lot, and it was around 600 feet from the house to the uh, cul-de-sac. Okay, so that that's my next question. So if you go with the five lot subdivision, you're adding about 100 feet to the uh, common driveway. Yeah, and I think I, I actually I should correct that because let's go back to the five lot for one second here. The common portion is really from where lots four and five separate to the uh, cul-de-sac. So maybe that's really closer to two or 300 feet. Um, on the four lot plan, the common driveway would be from here to here. And that would be an individual driveway in the last part. And, and as depicted, do you think that those would um, provide adequate turnaround for public safety vehicles, a fire engine, for example? Well, I mean, you know, we certainly have plenty of room. We can make, you know, we can, uh, I've provided a turnaround in front of each garage. We can probably even make that bigger as necessary. But, you know, I, I don't mean to, uh, I don't want anyone to think that this is a final design, but I think it just in, in concept shows what we're trying to do here. Okay, so in, in any event, you're going to need waivers. Right. Yeah, which, which I, I think, and Martha, please feel free to jump in, or for that matter, any of the other members. Uh, that's problematic for an OSRD because, you know, we usually start, well, not usually, but we have to start with a uh, as of right yield plan. So if, if you're going to need waivers, um, I don't know that an OSRD is, um, is practical for you. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree with that, Martha, or uh, take, do you have a different take on it? We have Martha. Martha, are you, are you still with us? Uh, I am. I think okay. um, my connection was bad, so I cut out for a while. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. We're just, oh. we're just talking about the OSRD requirement for a, a waiver free yield plan and uh, uh, how that may not be practical given, I don't see how they could uh, uh, come up with a waiver free yield plan for this project because of the uh, width of the roadway. Right, I mean, I think the discussions that we had about the previous proposal from Charing Cross, there was some discussion that um, it was, it was a, a factor of the, the shape of the lot and the fact that there's only 50 feet um, for that 200 foot length, um, as Mr. Griffin mentioned, so that there might be some, some flexibility on that, but it is the board's practice to require a waiver-free plan for an OSRD. And, and I think there's, um, if I'm not mistaken, it to, I mean, to keep jumping around on you, but if I recall, if you're coming south uh, on Orchard, Orchard Street, I think there's a hill coming up approaching this uh, this driveway. And is my memory correct on that? A fairly steep hill. I, just, I thought the site distance was reasonable coming out of this uh, in, in both directions, and it's sort of you know at that you can see it's at the 
the angle point there. And I thought you had good sight distance in both directions, but I don't think that we actually measured and did a sort of a speed study kind of a thing to try to figure out, um, you know, do we meet a you know, 35 mile an hour, you know, approach or, or anything like that yet. So uh, we're, we're still a little bit in the preliminary part of our subdivision planning process. Yeah, and I'm not suggesting it's necessarily a problem. I, I just, you know, okay. trying to look, uh, um, you know, see what what we might have to look at in the future. Let me turn it to the board. Uh, Pete, any uh, any questions or comments or suggestions? Yeah, um, Martha, is it possible uh, to stop screen sharing for a sec? It's not me. That's Bob. Oh, uh, I'll stop. There we go. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'm I'm just a visual guy for for uh, uh, person to person contact. Uh, first, uh, Michael and Bob, thanks for being here. We appreciate your presentation. Um, my my where I'll, where I'll start is uh, um, Larry mentioned that there might be a problem with OSRD, um, and that might be a concern. Uh, I do always have concerns about extremely long uh, driveways. That's just that's just me on common driveways. But um, one of the things that we're trying desperately to to facilitate within our community is some type of affordable housing, and we we have difficulty with traction with that. Uh, and I think one of the things we have difficulty with traction with that is we don't have early discussions with applicants about creative ways to do things. Um, and if the board does, you know, decide, you know, flexibility within OSRD, would there be consideration or have you uh, thought of perhaps a two family uh, to, you know, try to, to, to look at that? Or, or are you familiar with our accessory apartment bylaw? Are you familiar with that? I think we've um, thought about an accessory apartments and to tell you the truth, uh, we, we hadn't really talked much about two families either, but we're, we're interested in your uh, yep. suggestions. You know, so, you know, I, again, I'm just trying to, it's very difficult for us to get a lot of traction with, uh, you know, affordable housing in our community just because of our infrastructure. So if we can get creative in other, uh, other manners, uh, those are the types of discussions that I'm very interested in exploring. Uh, so I'm just going to throw those types of uh, concepts out there. You know, it's outside the box thinking, but I think that's how we can you know, start to do things. We do have a very, uh, very unique accessory apartment bylaw that allows for things to be uh, done to, for family extensions. Um, okay. And sometimes that's something very helpful. So look, that's my initial comments. Thanks very much. Okay. Hey, thanks, Pete. Uh, George, any any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, the only question I would have is, uh, what's the proposed width of the common driveway? Um, again, you know, haven't finalized anything, but I would think you know, 15 feet would be enough for a common driveway. Maybe you know, 16, 17 feet, but. Uh, and if, if it needed to be 20 feet to make people happy, I think we could do it. But I, I, in my experience, 15 or 16 feet is you can get two cars going, you know, opposite directions. Um, you know, you, you don't want to be going 30 miles an hour at that speed, but uh, I think it works for common driveways. But just would, to note, our, our, our bylaw requires 16 feet. Okay. So is the fire department uh, was it concerned that it'll come a driveway like that in a particular width? You know, I haven't spoken to the fire department yet. Okay. Yeah. I think given that this is at a very conceptual stage, um, you know, that that would be the next step would be to review with the fire department. Very well. Anything else, George? No, I don't. No. Uh, Leslie. My concern is the access in and out of the project. Um, onto onto and off of Orchard Street. What is the width of that between two buffering properties? And why and my other uh, my other question is if it's only a four to five house project subdivision, why do you need to have a cul-de-sac instead of just having a straight road in and out. Are all of these uh, houses going to be sharing a common driveway? Or is it off of a is it going to be off of a, a road that's going to be planned in and out? So it's definitely you know um, a, a dead end road and we drew the cul-de-sac because it conformed with the Newbury uh, subdivision regulations, and we, you know, have plenty of room for it. And the, topog the topography isn't particularly difficult in that area either. But we could certainly put in a hammerhead type of turnaround instead of a cul-de-sac. Um, 
two of the houses had uh, access directly onto the new way and two of the houses in the four lot plan had uh, you know, a common driveway serving those two at, at the end there. And going back to what Pete's comments were, at the houses that are at the end of the project, could they really serve to be um, more in the affordable housing um, dynamics of what Newbury would need at this point in time? I, again, it's something that we haven't really talked about um, on the applicant side, but it's, it's an interesting comment and we're certainly going to take it seriously. Um, you know, there, there's obviously a lot of land back there and, and I don't know if there's a way to, you know, work an affordable um, or uh, an affordable uh, component into this particular application, but maybe there is. Okay, thank you. Uh, Woody, any, anything? <clears throat> I, I don't have any questions at this time. I, I appreciate the uh, discussion and the presentation and uh, I'm gonna think on all of it. And, um, yeah, I don't have any specific questions. At this time. Just going back um, to the, the five lot subdivision, I'm having a hard time finding the uh, frontage for lot five. Where would that be? Yes. Uh, I'll share my screen again here. Yeah. So here's lot five at the end of the page here. And the lot, you know, it's 600 something thousand square feet. So 15 or 16 acres. The lot continues yeah. down here. And it's right here. Oh, I see. Okay. And, so you know, there's no... there's certain, and there is an upland connection from the frontage all the way to the house. So it's not like we have to cross the wetland to show access into that lot anyways. And I'm, not, I'm not suggesting it's a practical solution, but you could, you could physically construct a driveway. That's correct. Yeah. And this, the same with lot four on the four lot subdivision. That's correct. Yep. Okay. I don't think I have anything more. Martha, any, anything? Not at this time. Uh, well, I hope this is helpful. <laughs> uh, it, it is. Is it fair to say that the, the board hasn't waived the OSRD requirements in the past? Um, for a, a um, for a uh, uh, waiver free yield plan, not in my yeah, okay. the board, at least. Okay. Yeah. No, we, we, we thought there might be some problem with that, but we figured it, it, would be, it was worth asking. And clearly, the owners of the property, again, they had some uh, reluctance about the four lot plan, and they, they really wanted us to try to, to get an additional lot in here. And, and may, maybe it's impossible, but uh, we certainly needed to try. And so we thank you very much for you know, bearing well, with us this evening and, and giving us this helpful information. I mean, do you have to? Do you have to go with the OSRD in order to get five lots? So the way I read the OSRD regulations, it said, or the subdivision regulations, no, it, this was a, the zoning regulation said that um, if you have a five lot project or more lots, you are required to go through the OSRD process. Right. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to get an OSRD. I mean, you could still fall back on a conventional subdivision. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, my, my only point in bringing that up was it, it might be an exercise in futility to have to file for an OSRD. Right. Okay. And, and clearly, you know, it, it, it costs money to go through the process. It takes time. And right. the, the owners of the property aren't interested in, you know, spending uh, time unnecessarily. Understandably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, Again, I hope this has been helpful. It certainly has been for the board. And, uh, I, uh, you know, affordable housing is, um, is an important issue for us and uh, particularly near and dear to Pete Pecos's heart. I know something that uh, former chair has, uh, has uh, long been a proponent of, as have the rest of the members of the board. So if you could give some thought to that, that would be wonderful. We, we certainly will. And thank you again, all of, uh, for your time this evening.
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, Martha, anybody from the public here? Uh, not from the public, but again, um, Channing Howard is here, and I'm not sure whether he would like to say anything about this. My only comment is my other profession is the person driving the fire truck that will have to go in here. Um, <clears throat> fire truck's quite large. I'm sort of interested what the, the width of the paved new way would be. 24 feet. Excuse me? 24. 24. 24. And uh, the, uh, the driveways, the bylaw is 16. That's, that's still... That's tight. It may not be tight on a sunny day, uh, trying to bring a fire truck in there. But uh, in the middle of winter, when the snow on pavement, snow on the road, uh, and then we need to have a place the fire truck needs to be able to turn around. Uh, those are my only comments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good information. Yeah. Good. Thank All you. Right. All right. Good night, then. Thank you. Good night. Okay. So um, I think, well, those are all the, uh, it's all the new business. I guess we can get back to uh, the financial report, which I'm sure you're all been just waiting for. It is for us. <laughs> so I'll uh, go ahead and read the financial report for June, 2022. Uh, payroll and invoices authorized payroll warrants to the planning director, PR 22-25 for the pay period ending 6-4-2022, PR 22-26 for the pay period ending 6-18-2022, PR 22-27 uh, for the pay period ending 6-30-2022. And for planning board expense invoices, Verizon Wireless for the planning board iPad, 629-2022 and Martha Taylor employee expense reimbursement 629-2022. So that's our financial report. And next we have liaison reports. Uh, select board. The Leslie, select anything? Board, um, there were the Governor's Academy very generously gave fifty thousand dollars to um, the town for um, any, you know, for purposes needed. Uh, there were two grants, one in the amount of 200,000 and one in 500,000 um, for uh, shared streets and programs for um, the trail connection. And then the, um, the next, mo uh, Jeff Shaw came, who was the architect for the police station to give a presentation on a possibility of a new town hall um, on the corner of High and Morgan. And that will be um, on the next agenda. And then the last thing would be um, tomorrow night, there's a special town meeting. Uh, it's a historical meeting that um, the citizens of Larkin Road gained enough signatures to appropriate a town meeting in the event for the reason of um, to keep Larkin Road not a throughway, but to put a gate across between Parish Road and Larkin Road. And it had been um, voted on at annual town meeting that that's the way that the people, the will of the people wanted it. And then it, for some reason it was overridden. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, that Tomorrow night, this is a very historical meeting for most towns, especially this is the very first special meeting that has gone from petition to a special town meeting here in uh, Newbury. So it will take place at the round school. 
at seven o'clock tomorrow night and everybody is um, invited to come along and cast their vote. Thank you, Leslie. Well, um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I plan to be there tomorrow night and I hope as many of the members as possible can also join us. Um, thank you. Anything else, Leslie, from the select board? No, I think that's all I have. Um, okay. Yeah, that's um, all I have for the for the okay. uh, board right now. Thank you, uh, ZBA. I, I don't have anything. Their regular uh, monthly meeting is on the twenty first, and I haven't seen an agenda yet, so I, I don't have anything to report. Conservation Commission. So thanks, Larry. Uh, two things that we uh, just want to bring to your attention: Governor's Academy uh, uh, had a request for a minor modification. Uh, with regards to their doc, uh, their minor modification might might create a, a small concern, so they're they're having to uh, just kind of reevaluate that. Um, and then the other uh, one of, uh, of interest is uh, Brago Solar 104, uh, 140 uh, Main Street. Um, there's a uh, NOI for a notice of intent uh, uh, for a limited project to construct a road alongside an existing farm road and wetland crossing. Um, that one's going to probably uh, be uh, uh, more fruitful with discussion. There's going to have to be a bridge built. Uh, there's two crossings of wetlands. Um, there's going to be some significant impact. And, uh, and the commission has uh, three new, four, three or four new commissioners right now. Um, so there's going to be um, uh, uh, introduction of new concepts with, with that, uh, uh, that project. So um, it's all built, yeah, but they can't connect because their uh, national grid has, uh, has some requirements that mandate a road. Is this the ESAR property? That is, yes. Thank you. Very good. Uh, thank you, Pete. Uh, Martha, MVPC. Um, MVPC, uh, the last sort of commissioner's gathering was really an, an outing on the Merrimack River. Uh, we went up by boat to uh, as far as Merrimack and the MVPC staff showed pointed out projects that they've been working along uh, on the way. Uh, the next commissioner's meeting will be in September. Um, I was on vacation, so I actually did not attend the 623 planners meeting. Um, one other thing I did wanna note is uh, MVPC had received a grant for their staff along with Greenscapes, uh, Switch River Watershed Association and the Salem Sound Watch to complete a review of the all the bylaws and regulations in each of the 15 member communities regarding stormwater. Um, this was in part a, a year for MS4 general permit uh, requirement, but um, we have gotten some recommendations from them um, on amendments that we might consider to um, our stormwater bylaw, our subdivision rules and regs um, and other, other bylaws parking, for example. In general, ours are in pretty good shape. So I was pleased to see that, but there are some, um, some things that we will want to address going forward. Very and good, thank you. Can I ask a question? Of course. Thank you. Martha, was there any discussion on um, the significance and the lack of uh, how the water is diminishing in uh, surrounding um, reservoirs because of the drought. And as far as the um, algae that is um, building up in these areas? Uh, no, there wasn't really any, any discussion about that. It was really more, um, are you referring specifically to this bylaw review or? Yeah, I think this was really more for, for stormwater management specifically, as opposed to, um, you know, water resources and drawdown. I mean, there, there is a lot of discussion about that going on, but that wasn't related to this specific task. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, I guess we can move on. Uh, we've been through new business. Uh, as far as old business, we have nothing on the agenda. Um, which would bring us to the planning director's report. Um, I've got a few things here. Um, first of all, we're still waiting for a resolution on whether we can continue to hold remote meetings. Um, the uh, legislature pulled um, 
pulled this item out of the budget bill along with some other extensions like um, remote notarization. Uh, but there have been, again, separate versions passed by the House and the Senate. They have differing, looks like both are in favor of an extension. They have differing deadlines and the House has added some, uh, some additional provisions which um, requiring all boards and committees to allow for remote participation. Um, so there are potential issues with, um, you know, staffing and technology and so on and so forth. So uh, the deadline is Friday and we'll see what happens. Um, town council was optimistic that we would hear something before Friday, but right now it's looking a little iffy. Okay. Um, so I, I also was gonna remind everybody about the, the special town meeting tomorrow night. So thanks for bringing that up, Les. Um, so as Leslie mentioned, that's at uh, seven o'clock at Newbury Elementary in the gymnasium um, by petition from residents of Larkin Road and, and uh, at least 200 others. Um, I wanted to give a brief update on the master plan. Um, our consultant, um, Emily Innes has been reviewing the work that was done previously. She's been adding missing information uh, incorporating information from planning processes that we went through like municipal vulnerability planning um, and probably coordinating with our uh, uh, housing um, production plan and updating data as much as possible from the 2020 census. All the demographic data has not been released yet. So she's she's working from, I think the, the American um, survey data and other data as available. Um, and I'm working with the town departments to update information uh, on those departments for the community facilities and services section and coordinating with MVPC on an update to the transportation section, the mapping, and also seeking their input on, the, on other elements in particular housing, economic development, and uh, potentially natural resources. Um, I discussed um, having Ms. Innes come to our August 17th planning board meeting to give us all an update. I think there are a few sections, draft sections that should be available by then, which we'll be able to um, provide everybody for review. And then um, aiming also for our second meeting in, in September for a full draft. So that's, that's where it stands now. So Emily will be able to give you know much fuller update at, at that time when she meets with the board. Um, also wanted to give the board updates on some of our projects that are under construction. Um, the 68 Green Street project, uh, the house on lot three is under construction. Uh, electrical work uh, has been completed by the electrical contractor and signed off by National Grid, but they need to pull, National Grid needs to pull the wires. It should be done within the next one to two weeks, at which point they can move the pole that's in the way and they can complete the road. Um, I have received uh, draft uh, homeowners association documents for review. That's a requirement for uh, occupancy. Um, even though town council has not been involved with this project, it has been our practice to have council review these documents um, at, at least as to form. So I wanted to check with the board to see if you would all would like me to um, pass these documents on for review along with my own review. I, I, I would think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, 217, 221 High Road, the Gadsden Lane project. Uh, Attorney Doug Deshane is meeting with the abutter Marianne Sheehan tomorrow to talk about the screen, trees for screening. Um, so he's gonna keep me posted on that. I did emphasize with him that we do need, you know, per, per the conditions of our uh, approval, we need to get a written agreement signed by both parties um, outlining what, uh, what's going to be done and what they've agreed to. Uh, three houses are under construction there. Um, 84 Boston Road, they've done land clearing and stump removal. A portion of the site is graded and some ledge has been removed. Um, building construction itself has been delayed due to um, supply shortages. They're planning to install the foundation in December um, and follow that with the building construction. Uh, 
governors, as Pete mentioned, they are going to be um, probably coming to us also, also potentially um, regarding the doc, uh, doc modifications. Uh, I think may, may depend on how much modification, further modification comes out of the Conservation Commission um, discussions. Um, but they're moving along well. Um, they have a great uh, construction manager who's keeping us updated on, on uh, progress of the project and completion date is projected for end of March, 2023. Um, I already mentioned we've, we've gotten the a &R for the Witchstone Father Stone parcel for review and Rob Rosine came in today to submit a draft special permit amendment for the solar project at 136 Main Street, the Borrego project. Um, so I will be reviewing that. If everything looks to be in order, that will probably get submitted uh, at the first meeting in August. And we'd be looking to schedule the public hearing for the beginning of September. So, Very good. That's it for me. Thank you, Martha. Does anyone have any questions for Martha? I do have a question. Martha, at this point in time, is there a standing um, committee for um, the master plan? The master plan, yes, thank you. Um, there is not. Um, I guess it was felt that the, the master plan committee that was um, uh, active previously had done, you know, tremendous, along with the previous consultant, had done a tremendous amount of work um, on sort of the, the um, their focus groups and uh, community forum and so on and so forth. So at this point, it's, it's really more a matter of kind of updating the data. Um, the, in, the plan is to, when this draft is updated, the plan is to then have a, probably a couple of community meetings, uh, one virtual and one in person, um, as well as a survey to get feedback. And then that will be all incorporated basically into an appendix. And will appointments be made again for the master plan committee or will um, it be an open-ended type of thing? Yeah, my, my understanding is that um, there will not be any any reappointments for the master plan committee. So um, we'll be working, it's the planning board's responsibility under mass general law to, to do the the uh, do the master plan and it needs to be adopted by the planning board. So um, that's kind of the direction that we're going so in. You be, does it look like we'll be holding any like uh, as a planning board workshops um, as far as like um, being brought up to speed as far as how the master plan is going? So I think that's the intention of having our consultant, Emily, and has come to the two planning board meetings to, you know, provide that, um, you know, give, give the overview, describe the work that's been done, um, go through the sections. So I think the first meeting will really focus on natural resources, um, community services and facilities and, um, um, historic, uh, historic and cultural resources. And then the second one will focus on, on the other ones, including what we're hoping to get input from MVPC on. So, mm -hmm. the, you know, those, those effectively, I think will be workshops and certainly anybody from the public is welcome to attend those. Okay. So the hard work on the master plan has been done. The hard work on the master plan has been done. And there was, you know, previously there was a survey that was done. Uh, we've got all the survey results compiled. Um, there was a large kind of public forum. Um, we've got that information. There were several focus groups that were done. So all of that information is there and has been incorporated. So this really is more uh, bringing it up to date with current, current data and incorporating the, um, as I said, things like the municipal vulnerability planning that's been done. Um, and I think from that point of view, it's um, that's really going to enrich the plan. We didn't have most of that information when we were working on it previously. Um, the Great Marsh Coastal Adaptation Plan was just being completed. And that was one of the things we kept waiting and waiting and waiting for that. Um, so we couldn't complete the natural resources section. 
and then we started the municipal vulnerability planning um, work. And so we're going to be able to incorporate all of that as well. Okay. Larry, if I could add, if I could add. Yes, sir. So I think we're very fortunate that we have the consultant that we have, and when we uh, are introduced to her as, as a board uh, at our next meeting, hopefully, uh, you know, this is somebody that's local, this is somebody that lives in our community, that, and an individual that has a lot of talent in, uh, in working with master plans. And again, we're, we are buffing up what uh, the data that needs to be finalized. So uh, we're actually in a very good, good place with this project. I think so. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. Okay, wonderful. Um, I guess unless there's anything else on this subject, uh, we could move on to minutes. Uh, has everyone had an opportunity to review the May 5th, 21 minutes, meeting minutes? Yes. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of nods. So uh, uh, any, um, uh, any issues, uh, questions, uh, modifications? Pete? No, I'm good. Now, George? I can't deal with the uh, March 16th meeting. I wasn't here. Uh, I am. Uh, no, we're talking about May 5th, 21 right now. May 5th, yeah, I have no comments. Okay. Uh, Leslie? Nothing at this point. And Woody? No, nothing. No, and I, they looked fine to me, so I'd entertain a motion to approve as drafted. So moved. Thank you, Pete. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, I, I won't go through discussion unless anyone has anything they want to add. I'll just uh, uh, move to the vote. Uh, and I'll start with Woody this time. Woody, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Leslie, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, George, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Pete, how do you vote? Why, yes. Okay, and I vote yes as well. So they're approved unanimously. Uh, the uh, March 16th, 2022 minutes, uh, those were continued from our last meeting to give everyone an opportunity to review them. Uh, George, you've not seen them? No, I was not oh, at that. Oh, you're not at the meeting. So you, you right. could recuse yourself, I, I suppose, if you choose to. Uh, is there any reason why we can't go forward with a vote on this? Uh, Pete, did you say anything, uh, any uh, requested I'll changes? Uh, Leslie? Say. I'm good. Uh, Woody? No, nope, looks good. I'm good as well. So uh, uh, we'll, uh, I'll uh, take a vote, uh, or I would accept a motion, rather, to approve the uh, minutes as drafted. Motion to approve. Thank you, Woody. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Leslie. Pete, how do you vote? Yes. George? Can't vote. Abstain? Yes. Okay. Uh, Leslie, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Woody, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, and I vote yes. So it's uh, four in favor, one abstention. And uh, that uh, on the agenda, we have the April 6, 2022 meeting minutes, but those I understand are not ready yet, Martha. Is that correct? Not quite. Um, almost done. I need to proof them and a couple of things to plug in. So they'll certainly be done for the next one. Okay, so we'll hold those till next time. So that said, uh, that completes the agenda. If anyone has anything else they wanna add before we go? If I could, Larry, uh, just from a historical perspective, uh, in the past pre-COVID, the planning board would uh, tend to sit in the front row uh, as a supportive board at town meeting. So I just wanted to point that out, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm planning to be there myself and uh, hope to see as many of you there as can make it. Uh, okay, with that said, uh, I'd accept a motion to um, adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Leslie. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Woody. I don't think we need to go to discussion. So, Pete, how do you vote on the motion? Absolutely. George, how do you vote on the motion? Likewise, yes. Uh, Leslie, on the motion? 100%. Okay, and Woody, how do you vote? Yes, and good night, everyone. And I vote yes, and thank you all very much. Um, Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, well done, Larry. Thank you very much. Okay. Larry, great job. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you making it easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see you all soon. Thanks. Good night. Bye.